So, good morning, everybody. I hope the evening yesterday was not too heavy for you, and you can f also follow then a little bit my in explanations in additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is something what you probably know that we established everything in uh, 2022. And um, we in Germany with the Solid Chem Additive GmbH are more or less than the only separate company inside of Solid Chem that is just focused on additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is not something new, I would say. A lot of you probably are familiar with plastic printers. Some of you have maybe some uh, of these printers at home. We are more or less focused then on industrial printers. Um, and, um, but before I want to invite you to the journey, I will ask you two questions. <clears throat> Do you think that additive manufacturing will replace the CNC machine? Maybe that is the reason why also uh, Emil established or founded the additive manufacturing division. And the second question is, uh, what is the reason for SolidCom to invest into an additive manufacturing market? At the end of my presentation, I hope you can answer these questions by yourself. So, let's go a little bit deeper in the future of manufacturing. What do we currently have? A lot of machine shops have a perfect solution with solid cam, um, cam software, but that is just one thing. And then the second, what we see in the future is also that there's a combination of this CNC plus additive manufacturing. We have on our booth on the table, uh, we have a sample there. It is a, a copper part, a copper part with internal spiral channels. But at the end, you also have to machine it where the plug is in, there must be some threads in. So it's always a combination, I would say. You can use the additive manufacturing to bring some advantages in the parts, but at the end, that is our focus, that you have to machine it. So for us, it is more or less a combination, what we say. It is not a competition between these two worlds, additive and machining. Yeah, we see us as a kind of integrator uh, for these technologies. What kind of printers do we have? Emil invested uh, a lot of um, in this uh, new technology. So you see here our um, different places, locations where we are. We have in all of these places uh, the possibility to benchmark some parts. And to be honest, we get a lot of requests from our customers, and we are in the perfect situation that we can really tell our customers would it make sense to go in the combination of additive manufacturing or stay just with machining processes. Yeah, if there are no, from financial side, if there are not any in, uh, advantages from production side, then we advise our customers to stay with the existing CNC. What kind of printers do we have in our portfolio to um, follow or to guide in our customers here with, uh, in this process? At the end, you see the end use part. That's always important. The second one is also we all ask, always ask our customers what kind of volumes do you want to produce? Then we can decide, make this printer uh, sense or make another printer sense. You will see um, in the near the entrance, you will see a, a separate printer or uh, different printers. But at the end, if there is a question of a customer, I just want to print prototypes, I want to print small volumes, then therefore we have also a thinner printer. At, at the beginning, we normally start with a functional prototype. That is something what you can do with your uh, plastic printer, whether you use our printer here or whether a customer has his own printers, that is not so important at that stage. But at the end, we have here, you see that uh, printer outside, we have here a new brand, it's called Anisoprint. It's a printer where you can work with endless fibers 
and different types of plastic materials. The advantage here is the layer height of these printers, an FDM printer, is similar to that one what we have with the Desktop Metal Studio system. Desktop Metal Studio system is a, is a printer. The printer is running outside that, uh, where you can print green parts similar to an FDM printer, and at the end you go in a, in a furnace. Later on, and that is an important issue for, for us, it's always a question of the machining. So we print something, and uh, then we go on the um, CNCing center, and then the customer can have the final end use part. Another thing is, and that was also some result of the AMB, that um, we had the studio system with us, the uh, printer was working, but um, some of these um, visitors were not so much interested in uh, using uh, printing, um, uh, printing metal parts, but most of them, if you are then from the machining area, then they make their own jigs and fixtures and grippers. And therefore, you can also use the same printer, the same anisoprint. Uh, you have there more or less the quality of an aluminum. You will see later on a few uh, examples in the presentation uh, where you can print then uh, these kind of jigs and fixtures. If a customer is interested in mid-volumes, then we can also cover it. Yeah, we have our e -Tech printer. It is a, a plastic printer also for the fi uh, functional parts, lower uh, layer heights, and at the end, if the design is frozen, then we co can go into the desktop metal shop system. Desktop metal shop system is a, a printer where you can print really bigger volumes. And later on, as before, we go in a CNCing machine, and then the customer has their end-use parts. High-precision uh, samples or parts, that is also where, what we can cover. We have a new printer, it is called an, um, uh, the Desktop Metal Innovant X. We have a very small sample also on our table. It is a kind of gripper for an endoscope. Uh, yesterday in Zwicker's presentation, you have seen this gripper also, and um, it is a part what normally is machined out of 10 different pieces, and we printed this in one. Uh, between the grippers is a, is a hinge in, and there is a space of 0 0.09 millimeters. From there, you can go also either additional machining or then uh, different end-use parts. Just one or two slides about these printers, what we have. So that we have here this uh, studio system. Studio system is either for low volumes or also a very good printer for um, the EDU department. What do we have? We have bounded rods. The powder is bounded in rods. Uh, uh, the powder has a, a size of uh, 25 microns. So you can handle it very, very easy. You don't need any self-protection equipment, nothing. It is just uh, put in sticks, uh, and then we put this into the printer. It's running outside. You can use this everywhere. Uh, you don't need any tools. So good for low volumes, good for shop applications. Uh, you can use this in your office, and also then a perfect solution for EDU. For EDU, we sold a few of these printers within the last month. And after the printing process, you go into the furnace and do the sintering. Very, very easy. So it's more or less uh, just in a two steps you can get then your final parts. Mid-volume or bigger volumes, therefore we have this uh, shop system, what I said before. Shop system. You normally see just uh, the printer itself and the, and, and the furnace, but it is a little bit more of what you normally see here. So we have a powder station, we have a, uh, the activating oven, but here you can handle directly, or you have to handle directly the powder. That is something I will always say if a, um, a service provider, if a customer want some, uh, wants to earn money, 
then this is a best solution for him because there he can do a mass production. And also, if we work there with the service provider, if, if we choose somebody there, then we recommend also that this company has its own CNC machines uh, to finish then the parts. Equipment yeah, is that um, here um, the yeah. how is it here? So on one side here is the powder in, then the build envelope, and then uh, the sprinter just makes a combination between the binder and the powder. No heat in the sprinter, nothing. We activate then the uh, the complete mixture in a separate oven. So, and um, we can say here, based also on that um, production scenarios, what we have, that we are roughly 10 times faster compared with SLM, with a laser-based uh, solution, also with powder. You can do a mix, you can do a batch production, you can do a medium or a large production. So, we use this uh, printer very often also for this uh, mixed uh, build envelopes uh, if, uh, in, if we do some benchmarks then for our customers. Then you can mix different parts in one uh, uh, print shop. The third one what I want to show you is also this new one, the Anizer print, an FDM printer uh, with, um, for endless, with endless fibers. There, Lutz Feldmann will do then um, uh, the presentation uh, especially for this one, it's also a turnkey solution. We want to use this for chicks and fixtures and also for grippers. The main thing is the printer what we have outside is an A4. The advantage here, you work with endless carbon or basalt fibers and then you overmold it. Details will follow from Lutz yeah, and then you can print there some parts as a you uh, need for your production. For two different sizes, an A4 size, an A3 size. Some sample examples uh, in the next slide. So cutting head, I think that is not something new. You have seen this in several presentations. Also uh, in the presentation of Emil, you have seen it. What we in general do is if you have to machine some areas at the end based on tight tolerances and so on, then we add there, and that is where we have these uh, red areas, we add there more materials that we can later remove uh, this, uh, the uh, material there to achieve then the tight tolerances. The same what we do here is also with the bone plate. With the bone plate is always the question, uh, or in general, our philosophy is that we design a part that it's later easier for a machining process. Here you see with the bone plate, yeah, you can either, if you go to a service provider and a service provider is printing that for you, then you get just the bone plate. We add an area here for an easier fix in the machine, in the CNCing machine, and that is something what we printed here or also machined in our tech center in Schramburg. In total, you can, there is a, on, on, the, on the bottom line, it's written down 280 parts, 280 parts same, but also possible for us 280 different parts. So you can really do uh, it like customers need, like, you pay, uh, like a patient is needing it. Surgical instruments. Also, these are numbers what we got from uh, our customer. In that case, for example, it is Rudishhauser. Yeah, he is using this, he is machining this part here um, on a CNCing machine. You see here also the costs for the complete part, for the complete uh, surgical instrument. And then he was asking us that lower areas here is always the same. Can we use there? Additive manufacturing can be used there 3D printing, but on the upper side, yeah, where the uh, cl uh, clipper is, there we have to do something custom uh, specific. And that is what we decided here that we made a blank 
and then he can machine it at the end on his own uh, machines. One of the last samples, what we have here is also, it's a kind of uh, dental forcep. That is something where you see here, with eye machining, the machining time takes around, just for this insert here, takes around 25 minutes. And in combination then with additive manufacturing plus final CNCing, just machining there where it's necessary, yeah, it takes just eight minutes. So the customer is saving 17 minutes per part. And if you calculate it on your CNCing machine, in total, if you have to print five, uh, 500 sets, then it's a, around 280 hours in saving. Another possibility here also is for material reducing uh, in combination with that one, uh, uh, then it is just needed uh, to, re you know, or you can reduce here then the need of material. Sample what you see outside is then also what we did with this um, milling or uh, with this rocker. It is printed and then uh, at the end yeah, you see here how much it costs if we do this with aluminum. And then on the next slide, you will see how much it costs if you do this with 3D printing on our anisoprint. So that was more or less one of the last slides. I have to uh, save some uh, of time. Yeah, and um, so I want to come back to my questions from the beginning. Do you think that um, additive manufacturing will replace CNC? I will say no, based on the tolerances and also based on the technology. So it will be also the future um, that we have these combinations of 3D printing and, all, and the existing CNC technology with uh, SolidCAM software. And what are the reasons? The main message is you have your own customer base. You can offer this to your customers. Yeah, you can be more, uh, then a little bit more work as a partner. It is not something that, that you have to discover new customers. Just offer 3D printing. Choose the right customers. Offer that to your customers. And then uh, you can create more margin, more revenue, and uh, also being a more interesting partner for your customers. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you see it in his presentation, everything looks easy. It's very difficult. Why? Because CNC machine shops are used to buy CNC machines, and they know how to do CNC machining. Now you have to teach them how to use this technology. It's not easy, but we have a great guy doing it. Good luck. Thank you.